Now, uh, Ranjit Brar is a surgeon. I mean, I'm not making that up. A surgeon was arrested in London yesterday over what seemed to be the, the cover of a book or an illustration or a picture in a book. That means that uniformed police who are going into people's bookstalls and <laughs> leafing through their books to find something they thought they might be able to arrest them for. As I said earlier, would that you could get that kind of detail if you're the victim of an actual crime in London. But Ranjit got held for 24 hours in jail, got taken off in handcuffs, a surgeon in handcuffs. Dr. Ranjit, tell us what happened and why. George, it's very good to see you. Thanks for uh, having me back on the show. Um, well, I went, like many people, George, um, to express my solidarity with the Palestinian people who, as you are covering and many people will tell you, are suffering enormously currently since Operation Alaska flood, when, of course, the Palestinian people fought back against their occupation, which is not new, but has been a 75-year ongoing massacre, genocide, displacement, forced transfer of the people of Palestine. Um, which we can't go into the full history, but it's important just to say that context because whenever you see a mainstream media interview, they always start by ignoring that context and asking everyone to condemn Hamas, condemn Palestine, condemn the fight back. I, I, I don't do that. But, but I went to express my solidarity and support because the Gaza, we know Gaza Strip, is 2.3 million people, one of the most densely packed civilian areas on the planet. An area, of course, that's so densely packed precisely because they've already been ethnically cleansed once from their homeland of Palestine and put in that uh, open air prison that is Gaza. Uh, and we know that uh, the, the mass military onslaught against the people of Gaza has resulted in 15,000 deaths and perhaps uh, as many as five and a half thousand of those children. And, and, and I know surgeons, I know uh, people who are working in Palestine and have worked in Palestine. We've all seen a moving testimony, uh, a, a heartrending testimony of surgeons operating on children, life after life. They're trying to save in conditions of siege. Uh, when you know the, the the chief of police, the, the defense minister of Israel, can come, you know, on the screen, we've all seen this, and say we're dealing with human animals. Human animals is what he called them. That it's okay to put them under siege conditions, to take away their water, their fuel, their electricity, their medical supplies, to bomb civilian areas. It's, uh, these are huge mass crimes we're witnessing. But worse, perhaps, even than the crimes of Israel are the facilitation of those crimes we've seen by the Western mainstream politicians, which in a sense we're used to, but it's never been so starkly illustrated, I think, to the working people of Britain as it is now. And there is huge mass, you know, a, a discontent, uh, uh, not just amongst, you know, the, the ethnically Arab or Muslim population, but amongst the whole of the working class population. This is a traditional, you know, a, 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 a cause that has got huge support from Labour families in Britain, from the working class of Britain, from the white British working class. Uh, in, in, a, in addition to the fact that, of course, we have a very, you know, multicultural and multi-ethnic population. So I, like many, I, I, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Palestinian, but I, I support justice. I'm against terror. I'm against, I'm against the murder of civilians. Uh, and really, you can't call it anything but a genocide. So I went down, as I did on the 11th, 11th today. Today, it seems I've literally just been bailed, not today, of course, it's yesterday, um, uh, 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 to express my solidarity. I set up a stall. I've got some books. We, we have books. Uh, my, my father is an author, as it happens. He's written books over a long period of time on, on this struggle, one in purism in the Middle East, one specifically called Zionism. And it's subtitled A Racist, Anti-Semitic and Reactionary Tool of Imperialism, which is a mouthful. But really what it does is it, it documents the history of Zionism how Zionism was implanted into Palestine at the time of the Balfour Declaration with the full support of Britain, precisely to use, use it. And, and this is not my words. This is the, the words of, you know, um, um, uh, the first military governor uh, uh, that Britain installed there. In his own words, uh, his name was Storrs, S-T-O-R-R-S, Storrs. He said, I'm the first military governor of Palestine since Pontius Pilate. And he said, in his words, that Britain intended to create there in the Middle East a loyal Jewish Ulster in a sea of potentially hostile Arabism. What did he mean by that? He meant that they wanted to create a state which would help them to colonize and loot their newly conquered territories, which of course were divided up in the Sykes-Picot Agreement after the defeat of Turkey, when all of those you know, Arab territories, including of course Iraq, um, were divided 
uh, and, and fell to Britain. And so this state was created and has been committing crimes since its inception. Uh, and that's the background. And, and this booklet really explains that uh, history. It also explains, amongst other things, the fact that because Zionism was an ultra-nationalist ideology, an ultra-nationalist ideology which thought actually that Jews were the chosen people, it's a supremacist ideology and it's a racist ideology, but it also thought that Jews could never be accepted in Europe. And it was by no means a mainstream philosophy at the time it was being promulgated. It was a marginal philosophy, but it was of use to British imperialism and they promoted it with the use of Theodore Herzl and others and were ultimately successful in promoting it. Um, interestingly, the first, uh, m uh, the only minister of the war cabinet at the time of the ba Balfour Declaration um, was someone called Edwin Montague, uh, famous for the Montague Chels Chelmsford reforms later in India, which has its own story, led to the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. But, but he said, you know, that this was a deeply anti-Semitic policy and he was against it. Uh, despite that, it, it went forward and it's led to a state which has constantly committed crimes, particularly from the Nakba in 1948, of occupation, of genocide, uh, uh, of of. Uh, expulsion of the native population and really setting up an apartheid state and is currently engaged in, in really mass war that can only be characterized as genocide. So this is the book. Um, you know, these, these, these are historical facts. Actually, the book is a collection of sources, principally of Jewish authors, academics, and even Israeli courts dealing with that and also the Havara, the transfer agreement. So, so, so things which are historically documented fact. But what I've noted, George, and I'm sorry, I, I, but there's a slight pressure of speech to get, get some information out. But what I've noted is um, that really there's a, there's a war on this information. Uh, we've seen since the attacks on Jeremy Corbyn, the attempt to weaponize anti-Semitism to make Israel and by extension from Israel, actually British and U.S. imperial policy in the Middle East and elsewhere immune from criticism. Uh, I think seeing Rishi Sunak, seeing Keir Starmer line up in support justifying the genocide, saying there mustn't be a ceasefire, saying that Israel has the right to defend itself when it's the aggressive party in this whole history and conflict uh, is disgusting. So I, I've, I've been to express solidarity. I was arrested for doing nothing other than having a book expressing those truths. Holding, and it really is those holding truths. A book, which, holding a book hold that a, you didn't even no, write. Not, not, not even holding it actually, but being, being near it on the stall. But, but uh, you know, first of all, the police were fine, and it's clear that there was, there's, there's clearly pressure from a political source because the actual police who you see arrested me, they were very nice, George. They'd been talking to me to an hour. They had no problem with me. We were having banter. I was talking to people. Then they were told, "I'm sorry, we have to confiscate the book," and they came to take the book. And, and, and I've got a video of that, so I'll, I'll post that later. But um. Then they went away and half an hour later they said no no we've got new orders now we have to arrest you and it was a slightly surreal thing because nothing had happened it was a literally nothing had happened but quite clearly we've seen suella braveman and david cameron come out and try and you know criminalize say that the marchers who are protesting against the genocide in gaza are hate marchers saying that they're anti-semitic saying that the police should crack down on them it's quite evident that at some higher level there was a there was a referral and adjudication process and the, the police who had been absolutely friendly and were perfectly decent to me were suddenly ordered to go into this kind of attack mode. And, you know, it's, it's an uncomfortable thing to have your liberty taken away, but it, it doesn't compare in any way to the suffering and the heroism of the Palestinian people who, through no fault of their own, have found themselves on the, the cutting edge, really, of, of imperialist onslaught in the Middle East. So really, I don't and, and have you all from have you been that. charged no, of course. But um, have I, you been I, I, charged? So, Will this go to so, court? So it's, it's a good question. I, I don't know is the answer. So I've not been charged. Um, they, when they arrested me, and this time they, they, they did arrest me. I mean, I, I've been arrested once before, also uh, uh, outside the Israeli embassy, precisely for a similar attack of Israel on Palestine during their Operation Castle in 2008. On that occasion, they didn't arrest me. On this occasion, they, they arrested me. They went through the process. They said that I was in breach of Section 5 and later added Section 18 of the Public Order Act. I didn't know really what it means. It means threatening words and behavior. Then they said it was racially aggravated. And then later on, they said it's a, it's a racial, uh, it's, it's imager, distributing imagery likely to cause racial hatred. And I've so I've sat with them in interview, I've explained to them, I'm a lifelong campaigner against racism. I'm a lifelong campaigner. Sorry, George, if I lost you. I'm a lifelong campaigner against racism. I'm a lifelong campaigner for equality. But what I'm here to demonstrate against are concrete crimes, which are 
war crimes, mass transfer of population, civilian population, siege of a civilian population, bombing of hospitals, bombing of schools, bombing of churches, bombing of mosques, genocide against the civilian population. But what's quite clear is that our government are so intent on standing in solidarity and supporting that genocide that they wish to criminalize dissent, they wish to criminalize historical facts and truth in this case. So I don't know yet the full repercussions. At the moment, they've bailed me. Uh, they haven't pressed any charges, but I will have to represent to a police station. Obviously, I will do so. I'm hopeful that they won't actually follow this through and that they will back down. But whatever happens, I won't accept it. I will, I will, I will fight it uh, for as long as I need to as part of the widest you know, cause of defending the right to free speech in this country and of defending the right of all those who want to stand in solidarity with Palestine to do so. It's not really about me. It's really about the Palestinian people. And it's really about isolating the British people from the knowledge and the feeling that they are justified and have the right to express their opinions on this issue, George. Dr. Ranjit, we're right behind you. Well done. Thank you very much indeed for, at no notice at all, appearing on the mother of all talk shows. Very good to see you again.